I don't think there's anything that characterises the Australian outback and the Australian bush and the people that live in those places anything more iconically than the standard Aussie bush wire gate. One just like this. Right? Wire, wood, barbed wire forming the actual fence itself and the gate itself. And then these incredible leverage systems that people living on the land have to use. It's a cost effective measure. But more importantly, what it does, it has tapped into and expressed this innovation potential that Australians and people generally the world over living on the land in a rural setting exhibit. You know, they're solving a problem with very simple pieces of wire. Problems that need to be solved, otherwise livestock goes astray. And fences need to be maintained. And it's just not cost effective or practical to put a steel gate on every opening in a property's boundary. So the, the wire gate is, it, is something you're going to see on every single property you ever go to in Australia. And I'm sure in other parts of the world. It's the thing that really demonstrates and shows you the many, many practical ways that we've been able to come up with to get this gate to work in particular ways. It incorporates ingenious leverage principles, sometimes from the top, and this one is from the bottom. This one latches at the top, has a simple foot loop at the bottom, and allows it to be open that way. And I can unhook it, and I've got my gate open. And when I put it back together again, I'll just do the reverse. And then I use my foot to push that fella in and drop it down. So that's one version. We're going to look at, during this video, a few different examples of that ingenuity. It's an adaptive mindset that's being displayed in the way these people have put these things together. Now I grew up with old bushies who did this type of thing and it always intrigued me because every one of them did it slightly differently. And they all worked and they all were ingenious. So let's have a close look at a few different types. So this first one is the one we just looked at then. It's four strand barbed wire and they, that forms the actual fence structure. And you see the, the fence is actually linked together. So the four strands are linked together by a simple looping system of, in this case, another low tensile piece of barbed wire. That forms the network of the fence structure itself. And when you get over to the gate here, you'll see what I mean. This is the top retaining loop. Down the bottom here, there's a separate, I've just pulled it out of the way so you can see it, there's a separate loop. The leg or the foot of this gate post goes into that loop there. And then the tension is put on by levering against this post here with your foot. Very simple and very effective. So this particular one is a classic leverage type Australian bush gate. This pole here acts as a leverage point around that upright. This pole is secured by that loop there. When the loop comes off, as you can see here, the fence drops away. Simple and ingenious, and again at the bottom, it's locked in by a wire loop. This process is all just about basic principles of leverage here. This turns in, locks in, and we lock the leverage bar on. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is obviously set up for um, sheep or goats. The, the fence strata itself has been sort of made into small squares. It's not a four strand barbed wire fence, for example. But you can see the closing mechanism is the same. In fact, this one goes all the way back around to the other side and is a retaining loop on an adjacent line coming in. So there's lots of different ways you can achieve the same outcome with the principles of leverage and in a, yet another expression of that incredible innovation that people in rural areas are so renowned for. So why is all this stuff important? 
What's it with the gates anyway? Well, it's like this. It's a bit of a traditional Australian bushcraft. It appears in our sort of most anecdotal record of that particular craft, in terms of John Edwards' work, which we've been focusing on as a, as a theme for this particular series in traditional Australian bushcrafts. And a lot of people misconstrue the term bushcraft as a consequence. That's the term I prefer to use. It's, it's everything from leather work through to primitive skills. But it's also encompassing those basic old school wisdoms and knowledge bases that constitute how you put a fence together, how do we manage the land. And it's that ingenuity that intrigues me. And given that 89% of Australians now live in cities, it's a dying craft at that.